In this video, I want to talk about tangency and curvature, and I want to explain what that means and how you use them. So, before I can really show you how it works, I need to go over the basics of how the software works, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, the first thing I want to talk about are the curves and how they are described in Rhino. And so the first one is uh, control point curves, which is setting up the first point. And at this point, you do not have a curve, you do not have a line. And once you put the second point, now you have a line which is described by the beginning point and the end point. And you can always keep going and then press enter once you're finished. And if you show the points, if you turn on the points from your curve, you'll see that each time you clicked, you created one of the points that defines that curve. Now, a different way to use different type of curves is to use this one, the second one, which is called interpolate points. And this one is more interesting to me because it gives you this uh, feature here, this option, to build a curve with a specific number of degrees, and that's how they're called, they're called degrees. Um, and so let's see what that does. If I say three degrees, enter, and if I start with one point, second point, so now I have a curve, and if I show the points, I can see there's not three points on the curve, there's four points. And the reason for that is because if you're creating a curve, and you click somewhere, you do not have a curve. So the first point doesn't count because you need a second point to be able to define it. Um, it just doesn't exist as a curve until it's defined by a minimum of two points. Um, so that's what the degrees refer to. This right here is a degree free curve because it has the beginning point and then three additional CVs, points on curve, or curve points, um, which define the curve. So this is a G3, you don't really need to understand why um, or how it works mathematically. For example, you know, if you pull them out, they're not on the curve. Um, I mean, that's another thing too, there's CVs, which are points that define the curve, and then there's edit points. And edit points are different, edit points are points on curve, like if I do this and I show the points, um, hmm. yeah, this one does not have an edit point. Um, sometimes if you combine multiple curves and if you join them, then this becomes one curve, and if you show the points here, now this point right there is an edit point. It's a point on curve. Um, so that works differently. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that right now because it's a whole different, um, it just works differently than CVs. But for now, I just wanna focus on the degrees and how to use them, how they work, and why it's important. And uh, the first thing I want to cover here is with this curve here, which has three degrees, I want to kind of illustrate how you would line it up to another curve. And um, I want to explain what tangency means and what position means and how curvature uh, works and how it's different. Um, so let me let me go over it. And, um, one of the ways we can kind of illustrate that is by using the match command. So I'm just going to type it in match. Um, and there's actually two different types of match. One is just match, and the second one is match S L F for surface. So you can match a curve or you can match a surface. So in this case, we want to use the first one. And um, it's going to ask you for the first curve that you want to adjust. 
so it's this one and then the second curve which is an open curve you want to adjust to so in this case I'm going to try this one uh, and if you say position it lines up the first point if you say tangent yeah this is kind of confusing right now because you can see the original curve and then the result um, so for now I'm going to accept it with position and then I'm going to explain the differences between all of them um, so if you say OK, now what just happened here is the first point became aligned to the end point of this curve right there on the right side. Now if I do the same thing, if I type in match, enter, and al align um, this curve here to this one, if you change the option to tangency, you can see how it changes this curve now. It's not going this way here, it's going in. And the way it works is it takes the first point, this one, it aligns it to this curve. And so you can see how it differs from position. Position just takes the beginning point, tangency takes the second point, and then if you click on curvature, it's going to align the third point. And so that's basically all you need to know about this feature and how it works. Um, so I'll kind of show you how that works by accepting with tangency. And if I show all the points from these two curves, you can see that if you sketch the line from here to there, the relationship between this point, that point, and that one is linear. You have a line that connects all of them together. So that's what it does. It aligns points together. But if I do something and match it to be curvature, this will not be linear because the relationship is between this point and that one. So basically what it does is it makes sure that the acceleration of that curve has a relationship which leads and kind of keeps the continuity from this curve into this one. So it creates a smooth transition between the two curves. Now most of the time the way it's used is by matching, so I'm using the match command again, matching one side and then the other side. And as you can see here, if you if you use the wrong settings, if you use tangency, you'll get the first point, but if you use curvature, you'll align both points, which would be this one and that one. So because you're changing the position, of both of the main points from that curve, you're going to lose tangency on the other side. Uh, you can see that from here to there, it's not straight anymore. And that's because I aligned the first point here and the second point with the entire curve. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is if you're using a degree free curve like this one because you only have two points in between the first and the last point you would have to use match with tangency because you're aligning only the first point tangency um, and now you have this point which is tangent to the right side and this point which is tangent to this side. And so that's basically how this works. Um, to get tangency on both sides, you need a bare minimum of three degrees. So when you create a curve, if you use this option here, you would want to make sure you use three degrees because that gives you a first point, two points in between, which you can make tangent to each of the sides. And yeah, so that I hope that makes sense to you guys. Now, 
One of the reasons why they have this feature to make it curvature and align it to have two points is because that gives you even smoother results. And one way I can kind of illustrate that is by making a copy. Make a copy of the entire thing. I'll delete this transition, this curve I created. And let's see, how many points do I have? Um, yeah, so I only have three degrees for this one, so I'll just delete it. And I'm going to go back in the interpolate points. And now we have this interpolate curve with five degrees. So if we have five degrees, you'll see that we get two points here and two points here. So that's basically a default. Um, for most of the curves, you would want either degree 3 or degree 5, because with degree 3 you would get one point you can adjust, one point you can adjust on the other side, and with degree 5 you would have two points on each of the sides that you can align. Um, and so let me just kind of show you how it works and compare it. Um, so I'll do the same thing, I'll use the match feature again, and I'm going to match this edge to this one, and this time using curvature because tangent aligns one of the points, and this time we want to try to align two points. Okay, and now if I turn the points on and kind of look at them, you'll see that everything lines up and it's very, it has better continuity. It's a lot smoother than it was before. So I hope this gives you a better sense on how to use the match command and a better sense of how to use position, tangency, and continuity to get uh, smooth transitions between your curves.